Hello and welcome to our session about MRP and ERP. MRP stands for Material Requirement Planning and ERP stands for Enterprise Resource Planning. This is Chapter 14 in your Operations Management book. Um, so generally speaking, what is MRP and ERP? Um, MRP uh, is, is, the, is the idea that um, it the uh, after after you have you've done your aggregated planning and now you have some kind of a master schedule of orders and you know what needs to be done in a, in, a, in the big picture uh, um, and then you need to translate this 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 you know I need to you know I got orders for a hundred cars and uh, um, I know that I need to deliver them in this time frame, but then you have to break it down into the actual um, uh, resource requirements. So you got the orders now. What is actually needs to be done? When do I need to order it? And 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 how much? And um, the you know in in previous uh, uh, um, um, in previous lectures uh, we talked about about uh, managing inventory and um, and and how to do use lean operations and and all these different concepts that we're talking about about the economic ordering quantity and economic uh, production quantity but all these things we're talking about independent demand which is different from dependent demand and and uh, let me explain uh, what the difference is Dependent demand is the demand for items that are sub assemblies, uh, some assemblies or component parts to be used in the production of a finished good. So, um, you know, if I if I'm selling a car, the amount of cars that I sell is independent. Why is it independent? Because it, it it's not it's not dependent on any part in terms of the manufacturing process uh, um, um, it, it's it, it's not relate directly related to any inventory that uh, you know once the car is made and the inventory that I'm buying um, whereas dependent demand is directly related to the car for example the amount of tires I need to order the amount of uh, of, of uh, um, um, steel uh, the amount of uh, door handles I mean those that that type of demand is, is directly dependent with the amount of orders and, and, and the forecasted amount of orders that I'm going to have so it's very different from independent demand in the sense that the way that 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 the demand in terms of how much inventory I need to buy and when I need to buy inventory is, is kind of lumpy and and um, because you use large quantities uh, at specific points and then you have points in time where you use no quant no you don't need any of the um, uh, uh, of the inventory at all and, and and where does this come into point for example uh, if I if I am working let's say I have a, a, a company that that um, it manufactures lawn mow uh, uh, you know gardening equipment and I have you know lawn mowers and I have uh, uh, you know uh, three different types of lawn lawn mowers um, you know one is just you know the regular home uh, lawn mower that everybody has and then there's the the the, the, the drive type of lawn mower which you know looks like a little a little car uh, and then you know I'll, um, you know I have the commercially big lawn mowers that you see the the landscaping companies use okay um, some parts in terms of the the that I need to manufacture to do, to 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 build these lawn mowers are the same the blades could be you know the same the bolts could be about the same you know uh, and those I can really order and then use them throughout the, the, the manufacturing process but then there are parts that are very specific for each lawn mower that I only need to order them when I'm actually working on manufacturing that type of lawn mower um, so what happens is that I order a lot, let's say in April, because in April I'm I'm manufacturing, uh, let's say uh, home lawnmowers, but 
uh, then um, um, in June I don't you know I don't manufacture and I'm just giving rough examples here but just so you understand the difference between independent and dependent demand and how they're differentiation how they different in terms of the inventory management but when I move to producing the you know the commercial commercial big lawnmowers uh, um, I, I have completely different uh, demand in terms of the uh, of what kind of uh, parts I need, so that's that's why dependent demand uh, requires a different system of how you're scheduling. Now the 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 uh, one of the advantages of 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 uh, dependent demand is that it's very very predictable. And predictable, what I mean is not that in terms of of, of the you, you always know how much you're going to need in terms of the forecast, but uh, you know there you have a mathematical way that that is that is discrete and 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 and, and uh, um, easily calculated of how much material you need based on how many you need to produce. So if I tell you if you got orders to produce 200 lawnmowers and uh, and, and with another f uh, forecast to sell another 50 lawnmowers, you can calculate to the bolt, to the part, uh, how many uh, uh, parts and, and raw material or whatever you need in order to build 250 lawnmowers. And because you know how long it's going to take you to build them, you can also create the schedule. The schedule that t tells you when you need to order stuff, when they need to arrive, and, and how much you need. And this brings us to... Uh, MRP. MRP is the actual process of taking this uh, dependent demand uh, and and turning it into uh, a material requirement planning. So this it's, it's a computer-based information system. Uh, MRP w was only possible once computers became uh, available at an affordable price because you know when you think about it if you have hundreds of products that you need to manufacture and each one has a different uh, set of pr uh, requirements in terms of the materials and the orders it's 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 a staggering amount of computation and and a human uh, can't handle it uh, whereas a computer is perfect for the task um, so MRPs are computer-based information system that they translate the master master schedule uh, requirements, which is remember that is that big big plan that tells you uh, uh, you know from uh, from a big point of view how much uh, um, products you're going to sell and the orders that you have and when you need to to deliver them, and then it takes uh, uh, it takes time it takes the, these this master schedule and 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 it breaks it down into the, all the different sub-assemblies, parts, components, and raw materials. Now, an MRP needs to answer basically three questions. What is needed? So, you know, um, back to the lawnmower, uh, I have an order for 200 uh, um, um, uh, home-style lawnmowers. What do I need to build those 200 lawnmowers? Uh, 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 how much do I need? So we said 200, so I need 2,000 uh, you know, volts, uh, 200 times uh, blades, so I need 200 blades. And then the last question is when do I need it? Uh, and that's, that's, that's really the beauty of MRP because MRP really lets you schedule inventory in a way where you don't need to have big, big uh, uh, buffers and big uh, uh, stockpiles of stuff because you can you based on the fact that you know how long it's going to take you to manufacture and also you know how long it's going to take the lead time it's going to take for you to receive the raw materials or the different components you can really really put um put a, a date into when stuff needs to arrive to the factory so you really have the minimal amount of inventory that you need to keep uh on stock um so this is a big, uh, a, you know, a big overview of of an MRP system. Um, an MRP system has uh, 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 um, inputs and outputs, and uh, the inputs are 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 are, are um, divided into three basic uh, uh, types of input. You have the master 
uh, schedule which has the orders and the forecast remember again this is what kind of like the where the company has the plan of what it needs to manufacture based on the the demand that it sold and forecasted then you have uh, the bill of material the bomb we'll talk about it uh, and that's that's uh, uh, t basically tells you what when I order a chair when I order a lawnmower when I order an, an iPhone uh, what is it bill of? What what is the bill of materials that that actually uh, make one of those items? And then I have my inventory records, which which tells me how much do I have uh, uh, already have inventory, and how much you know how much will I need to buy? Because you know inventory is a, is a continuous thing, so um, um, I want to make sure that I'm using everything uh, I already have uh, to be the most cost effective. Then we put all these input into this computer uh, program that does a lot of different processing, and and then you get two types of of uh, outputs you have the primary report which obviously primary means they're the most important reports and then you have the secondary reports the primary pr the primary reports it will tell you uh, um, uh, when do you the, the, the schedule of when you have to order what and how much you have to order uh, how much how many orders have you already uh, built any changes and that's one of the the nice things about MRPs MRPs are built to be flexible they're built to to so you can put changes into the system uh, on the fly and the system will recalculate everything based on the changes then you have secondary reports which is the really gives you an overall view of the system you have the performance control reports obviously telling you is everything working as expected is it, you know uh, uh, is my supply chain is my production working as expected based on my master master schedules and my 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 uh, MRPs uh, the, you have planning reports allows you to kind of play around and and create all different scenarios simulations do planning based on the MRP and of course you have the exception reports which tells you okay what went wrong and then you can analyze it for quality um, and another another report is the inventory transactions which tell you basically what's coming in coming out of your factory which is obviously very important um, now MRP processing uh, it takes the end item requirements so you you um, 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 you, t you said okay I need uh, 500 lawnmowers uh, you know 600 chairs uh, you know, 700 tables doesn't matter and and then it explodes them into time phase requirements for assemblies and parts uh, in raw materials uh, that is also offsetted by lead time lead time means how long it takes you to get the parts of the raw material and, and when you say time phased it means that you you have a schedule uh, you you have a time when everything needs to get a, and when it needs to get in order to meet the requirements so if I told you I uh, you know if you're a factor and I put an order for 800 uh, chairs uh, five weeks from now um, you take the amount of time it takes to, for you to build a chair, how much inventory you already have in terms of woods, um, um, how long it takes for you to get the, the wood that you don't have from your lumber yard, and you know all of this information you put in, then you can s go back from taking you know from five weeks uh, from now you can go back and say, okay, uh, when do I need to get the wood? How much wood do I need to get? A a a and when do I need to start the production, etc., etc., etc. So how do you develop an MRP? Um, the, first, the first thing you have to do is you have to build what is called a product structure tree diagram. And a product structure tree diagram is basically a diagram that shows you how the product is built, how it's structured, what are the different components that, that, that eventually when put together turn into a product so for example if you look if you think about a chair if you, at the top of the diagram you'll have a chair and then you'll have the second level we'll see we'll say a chair has four legs and a seat um, and then you know you can go one level uh, down and say from the legs that the legs are made of you know you know four pieces of wood that have a plastic uh, cap at the end um, the idea behind creating product structure trees is that every level, uh, you know, the parent level and the children level, uh, work together. That if you start from the bottom and you you just manufacture and 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 build the different uh, levels one by one, at the end 
you have a finished product. And what this allows you in terms of uh, a, a material uh, um, requirement requirement plan is that it, it explodes the all the 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 big product into all the small different um, little uh, sub assemblies and parts and raw material that you need, and allows you to then take this information and 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 schedule when you need to order and work and and produce each part in order for you to meet the specific quantity and deadlines that you have um, uh, the best way to to explain this um, uh, beyond me just babbling is to show you an example so here's an example of a of very very simple uh, MRP that starts with um, the product design tree so our product is a shutter and this design tree only has uh, two levels the finished level which is the shutter and then the second level the, the child level is a shutter is made of two frames and four wood sections now if if we had an iPhone at the top and then and you broke it down to all the small uh, parts that would probably amount to you know hundreds of not thousands of different uh, parts and, and levels so this is very simple and it shows you uh, the concept, but really, when you're talking about about, about real products, um, actual products, this is much more complicated. So we started with the st with the design uh, uh, structure tree, and now let's take this and look at how we um, turn this into an actual MR. Um, we start our MRP at the top. We have the master master schedule for shutters and our master schedule for shutters tells us that we need to deliver to our customers the customers want needs to get they need to have in their hands a hundred shutters on week four and they want to have hundred and fifty shutters on week eight now how do I take this information and I'm and, and translate it into when and what do I need to produce uh, uh, and manufacture in my factory to meet these specific deadlines. So I look at my MRP and my MRP has, uh, because this is very simple, it has three different components. I have the shutters and the shutters they have a lead time, LT stands for lead time of one week. That means that it takes me one week to uh, uh, um, uh, build them, um, um, uh, finish them and uh, put them into the boxes and ship them to the customer but that's that is when the shutters are uh, um, at the point where all I need to do is assemble uh, the different parts or, 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 or finish the different parts and it takes me one week uh, before I can actually send them to uh, 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 deliver them to my customer so um, um, what happens is that I look at my master schedule and my master schedule says that uh, for the order of 100 they want to get it on the four, fourth week one week lead time I go one week back so I need I need to get my shutters uh, ready by week three and if I wanted to uh, for the 150 shutters order I need them to be ready on week seven if I want to make sure that I can get them to the customer on week eight so very simply, I looked at my lead time, and I just went back as many weeks as it told me. Now, I remember that shutters are made of two different parts. I have frames, and I have wood sections. Now, every shutter has two frames and four wood sections. So, for the let's look let's look at this point just at the order of 100, and the and the order of 150 is exactly the same. So you know once you understand the 100 you, you you also understand the 150 so I need a hundred shutters times 2 which means I need 200 frames and times 4 because I need 400 wood sections so for in my frames MRP I put the gross requirement as 200 and in my wood section I put the gross requirement as 400 now I need these uh, wood sections and frames to be ready 
on week three because remember it takes me a week of lead time to to put the frames and wood sections together I don't know paint them whatever put them into shipping boxes uh, and get them to my customer so I need everything in terms of the frames into woods to be finished and ready to go by week three now my net requirements for frames uh, is 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 200 and uh, um, I, I I need them to be I need to be the plan order receipts to be on week three but because it takes me two weeks that's my lead time from for frames I go two weeks back which gets me to week one which is when I need the planned order to be released remember if it takes me two weeks uh, 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 to get my frames ready to be assembled into the shutters and I need 200 frames then I, th the latest I can uh, um, um, have the frames ready uh, uh, ha start working on the frame sorry is going to be week one if I if I if I don't start working on them on week one I'm not going to be ready on week three which then is going to to impact the fact that I cannot get a hundred shutters uh, delivered to my customer by week four now the wood section uh, uh, is a little bit different because in the wood section I already have some uh, inventory, some wood sections scheduled to be delivered to me on week one. This was something you know that that was done before for a previous order. So projected on hand tells me how much inventory do I project to have on hand that I can use. And in this case, you see that on week one I'm going to get 70 wood sections. So I and I my projection on hand is to have 70 uh, wood sections that I can use now how does this combine into my MRP I need 400 wood sections to fulfill my order but I already have 70 in inventory that means that my net requirements is only 330 that's what I need the extra that I need to order in order to, to fulfill my uh, um, uh, master schedule requirements so I have a lead time of one week in terms of wood section it takes one week for the wood sections to get to me or it takes you know, uh, you know uh, the lead time really uh, um, you can look at it as the time it takes for your suppliers to provided to you but you can also look at it as you know the total time that it takes to manufacture and get everything ready in this case it's one week so I I have to be ready by the third week if I want to meet my order in the fourth week so fourth week so I go one back and I remember that because I already have 70 uh, wood sections um, um, in inventory I only need to get an extra 330 to meet my 400 requirement let's look at the same example but this time we're going to say that when I order wood sections I can only order them in lot sizes of 70 that means that my supplier is a, he only sells in multiples of 70 that's the minimum that you can buy 70 uh, or nothing so how would that impact my MRP so um, let's look at the same order of 100. Everything looks the same until we get to the wood sections. So in the wood sections, I need, I still need 400. That doesn't matter. I need to have four. That's my gross requirements are still 400 in order to meet the the master schedule order of one, of 100 shutters. But on week one, I got 70 um, uh, uh, wood sections into uh, my inventory and uh, th because of that uh, my my net requirements is 330 because you know I already have 70 but what you see the difference is that I need to order now 350 because 330 doesn't uh, divide by 70 uh, without a, 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 a reminder so I order 350 which does which is you know it's five lot sizes five times 70 350 but what happens here is that I order 350 I used uh, you know I had 70 on hand I used 400 so I'm left with 20 so my MRP doesn't say oh, okay you know gone I don't use it my MRP 
makes a note to make sure that there's 20 wood sections in my inventory which then can be used in order to fulfill my next order of 150 uh, shutters. Now, if you don't fully understand every step in this MRP, don't worry about it. In terms of the, 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 the exam, that's not the point. The point is that you understand uh, the, the importance of an MRP and how, how MRPs completely change the way managers can control and, 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 and report on the amount of resources and materials that they need and remember we're, 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 we just went over a very very simple example uh, you know a, a shutter that has only two elements but think about about a car or an iPhone and and how complicated uh, it would be to do this manually without uh, without a computerized MRP it would just be impossible to do it to know it each week how much you have to order what you need to work on and 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 what are the different requirements in order for you to meet your uh, uh, demand on schedule the benefits uh, of MRP I think are very clear it, it, it really gives you as a manager uh, uh, the most important information that you need in order to be cost-effective it, it really allows you almost in real time to know what's going on in, 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 in the factory and, 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 and when you need to uh, uh, schedule work and orders and, and MRPs systems are are used by every single you know, assembly factory in the world everybody uses because you just it's just impossible to do the complexity of orders that are required today uh, without it um, it, 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 it allows you uh, um, um, as a manager to really fairly easy track the material requirements to, to to evaluate your capacity but it also allows you to do uh what is known as back flushing which is um uh, taking the the bomb the bill of material that's what bomb stands for to determine the quantities of the components that were used uh to make an an uh, item so if i want if i want to know how many items and 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 what material was used for the amount of uh, of the amount of items that I produced, I, I I can easily use the MRP to 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 go backward and forward in terms of production and see the total amount of materials uh, that were used in the in the um, production. And this really really helps management get an overall view of what's going on, which helps them make a, hopefully helps them make better strategical uh, decisions. In order for MRP to work. Um, you have to have a strong computer system and, and, and MRPs can be pretty expensive because they require a lot of computational power. They're probably much cheaper nowadays uh, but generally speaking um, it's not something you can run on a, <laughs> on a home PC. Uh, the other requirement is that everything needs to be very accurate in terms of the input to the system. If, if you're not putting the correct and accurate bill of materials what a, pro a, a, a product is made of then obviously this is going you're going to get a, a bogus MRP if you're not putting the times the master schedules correctly then obviously the MRP is going to not going to work and the same for inventory records everything you put in needs to be accurate up to date MRP2 was the eval uh, the, the 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 evolution of uh, MRP uh, to include not just the actual manufacturing process, but to also involve areas uh, in the in in the in the firm that like marketing, sales, and design that uh, traditionally were not viewed as part of the MRP. Um, so it really it brought it, it gave MRP a, a broader view. It added other uh, um, parts of the uh, company into the MRP process so um, you have more accurate data in terms of forecasts and productions and needs. Another uh, advantage of MRP2 is that it, it uses what is also known as closed system which you have feedback. Uh, the traditional MRP didn't really have was not able to get real-time feedback about what's going on so you would you would come with an MRP plan you would go you produce whatever you produce and at the end of the process either it worked or it didn't work uh, and it was very hard for you to know 
what didn't work if it didn't work uh, well. With MRP2, you have this closed system that always continuously gives you feedback, which which allows you to change the plan, but also gives you a lot more measures about whether the plan is working or not working as expected. The next level of MRP, you know, you have MRP, MRP2, the next level is enterprise resource planning. That's the the holy grail of 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 uh, planning. This in, in an ARP system, you basically put your entire company all, you know, uh, 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 procurement and 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 finance and marketing and sales and manufacturing everything is interconnected to each other every information from one department is is automatically aggregated to all the different models and it, it, it gives you complete information complete control in terms of managing your resources the drawback of ERP systems is that they are extremely expensive and complicated to to implement and it, they do require expertise even to run them but they do provide huge advantages in the sense that um, um, you r if you use an ERP system uh, um, uh, efficiently and, 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 and in a smart way you can tremendously reduce your costs and you can tremendously improve your productivity because you have all the information you need available to you at real um, 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 ERP systems uh, um, can also be used as a great planning tool and one of the advantages that ERP brings to to a, a company that other you know other solutions don't is that it, 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 uh, it tells you uh, again almost in real time what's going on not just in one section but in, in in a bird's eye view of your entire system so you can relate your supply chain management to your customer satisfactions to your sales to your marketing to your procurement and you can really see from a strategic planning tool uh, uh, where you can improve the system because sometimes it's it, it's really hard to see how a problem in in for example in a supply chain uh, impacts the all the way to the customer satisfaction I mean you you s you understand it theoretically but how do you really solve the issue how do you improve the system when uh, you can't really see the continuous connection between all the different points and this is something ERP is really really good